The Black and Latino Caucus includes 13 Black and Latino state lawmakers who advocate for members of those communities on Beacon Hill. As the 191st state legislative session gets underway, four elected leaders from Western Massachusetts are part of that caucus, including 10th Hampton District State Representative Carlos Gonzalez, who was recently tapped to be the chairman. He joined me in the studio to discuss its priorities. Well, we are um, deciding what our major priorities are going to be as a body, first of all, and our bills are going to be all filed by this Friday, and next week we'll have our legislative priorities all set. However, I believe that the overall uh, theme is to fight the recidivism of poverty, to uh, look at f um, pushing a little bit further on some of that criminal justice reform that we had done in the last session. Past last session, yes. yeah. Yep. Affordable housing, and one critical, more very important, I think that's going to be high on the agenda is educational reform. Yeah. To that point about education reform, last year um, we, we saw reports from the individual advisory commissions that Governor Baker had set up now almost two years ago for the black community and for the Latino community. And they shared kind of some, some points of commonality, which were to improve opportunities for students, that piece okay. about education, um, finding pathways for workers to come up in the ranks, and to improve competitiveness among both the black and Latino business communities. The addition um, being from the Latino advisory group that they wanted to make a priority of welcoming immigrants. Mm -hmm. So three or four priorities coming out of that almost you know year and a half of work for that commission. Then Governor Baker stepped up and said, okay, I think uh, I can support this to the tune of $10 million. Is that amount of money sufficient to meet those goals from that those two commissions? Well, I think it's, it's one of the first steps in the right direction. Um, we know that when you look at whether it's the black community, the Latino community, and some of those recommendations, it all leads back to poverty and the recidivism of poverty. So we have to challenge it from a wraparound sort of service. So whether it's funding education from K to, to college, not only K to 12, like most people kind of think, we have to make college affordable to folks to move up that ladder. Um, when we have a mom that has graduated from college, the statistics of uh, youth uh, a, a child to go to college is extremely higher. So we have to not leave behind some of the parents that wish to go back and further their education also. I want to read something that you said at the time when the commission released its reports. You said, quote, in the past, many broken promises have led to the creation of no wealth in the black and Latino community, false promises in urban renewal, false promises in studies that have been shelved with great recommendations. So in your opinion, what needs to happen now in 2018 to change that past that you experienced? We have to follow through on the recommendations and, and back it up with money, funding. And we can't continue to do what has been done in the past. There's been many reports. And, and obviously, I'm not going to condemn the governor today for the issues that happened in the past. But I'm going to try to work with him and both of us hold each other accountable um, to make sure that some of these recommendations um, are seen through. As you're looking ahead to these new priorities, I thought it would be an opportunity to look back at some of the things that the caucus put its support behind last mm -hmm. legislative session, one of which criminal justice reform, mm -hmm. which we talked about just briefly, yeah. was passed. Is there something for you among that sweeping legislation that stands out to you as particularly important to the black and Latino communities? The Reduction of some of those mandatory sentencing guidelines. I think that's that's so important. We've been housing folks in in jails, um, um, and it hasn't really led to any changes in in the decline of of, uh, of crime. And you see the same people come in, go out, come in, go out. So how do we change that? So I think that we have to reinvest in rehabilitation centers. Although I'm a strong, firm believer and somebody does the crime, they have to do their time. But within that time period, we have them um, for that period of time that we can educate, prepare, and better, um, again, prepare them for when they come out. We as a community can be better off because we're not spending so much dollars in, in, in incarcerating people. We are rehabilitating people. Something else that the caucus looked at and was talked about a lot mm -hmm. over the past year, including on this program, was marijuana and the regulations mm -hmm. around it. Mm -hmm. I know the caucus really pushed for diversity, not only among black and Latino communities, but women um, and, and some other communities as well. As the Cannabis Control Commission has issued licenses, 
we haven't really seen mm -hmm. much in the form of minority ownership or female leadership yet. Uh, are you concerned about that? I am. I'm extremely concerned. And that's where I say the proof is in the pudding, right? Rhetoric is good. Uh, discussions are great. And reports are outstanding. But they don't get to the end result. So we need to make sure that that dialogue, that commitment, that um, um, decision to make sure that folks that were affected by the incarceration they, rate because of that, because of a jail of that, offense. that they too can participate in the financial benefits that the marijuana industry will bring in so to the state of Massachusetts. What's the step to bridge this gap? I think we need to continue to push on the effort on both sides. One is from the commission point of view, but also from the community point of view. There's many people that today don't feel that they can run, operate a business um, in the marijuana industry. And that comes from our community. So that's some work that we have to do as a community. But we do have some um, potential licenses coming up that we uh, are hearing about. And we will hopefully be supporting to make sure that we can make sure that some folks that come from the minority communities are the licensee holders. I read something in the Mass Live comments, and that's sort of an ongoing discussion here on the program. Mass Live comments, read them, don't read them. But I want to read you one of them that stood out to me. It said, quote, Keeping, keep creating groups based on color or any other difference, and you perpetuate the very problem that you condemn. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I think that we need to work across the aisles, right? We need to have all voices at the table. So no group, person, or individual can work alone. There can't be islands. So the Black and Latino Caucus does serve an extremely important purpose because we have been able to sometimes legislate our way out of racism, but still racism exists in many people's hearts. So the more these groups have and the more voices can be heard, I think the better it off for all of us.